Kemi Badenoch did represent something different. Yep. And you were supporting her, I believe. Yeah, Kemi... With her out of the race, what are we left with? I mean, we're left with three absolutely terrible candidates for the most part. Uh, Rishi Sunak, who seems to believe there is no difference between the contents of my wallets and the contents of the Treasury's coffers. You have uh, Penny Mordaunt, who's busy backflipping all over her record on trans issues and frankly seems more suited to being a leader of the Labour Party than the Conservatives. <laughs> or, or the Liberal Democrats. Or the or... Liberal Democrats, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you have Liz Truss. And, of course, um, Liz is better on policy than the other two. Um, but you feel that she would struggle to win a general election and we have one coming up in two years. So there is a real dearth of talent at the top of the Conservative Party right now. And yet there are people in and around The Spectator magazine who you're writing for, people such as Lord Frost who sat in that chair a few weeks ago, uh, senior figures in the ERG, people that I fought with alongside in the referendum and in the battles that came against Mrs May, advocating Liz Trust. So why are you so sceptical about her? I mean, I think she's definitely in the... the the, le the least bad of the current bunch, if that makes sense. Because she's the least bad. She's the least bad. Um, I'm not infused about her, but her policy instincts are quite good. She has a, um, she does have a sort of bright idea on taxation, on deregulation. I think she probably, despite having been on the same side of the referendum as me, I think she would probably not think to overturn it. Yeah. Um, so I think she's, you know, of, of the current candidates, she's probably best suited. Rishi Sunak is far too heavy on taxation for my liking, and of course we covered the uh, penny. Um, but the, you know, the, the interesting thing is whether or not she gets onto the final ballot, because right now there's a real suggestion that uh, what will happen is Rishi Sunak will lend her some of her, their, sorry, lend yep. her some of his MPs to make sure that uh, Penny gets onto the ballot and it's a run-up between those two rather than Liz Truss. So Rishi would rather face Penny Morden than face Liz Truss, you think? They, there has been some suggestion to that effect, yeah. Um, and because obviously Liz is coming further from the right of the party and would sort of bring some more of those uh, votes with membership. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, 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 it's bewildering to most people watching and listening to this now. And I've no doubt there are jobs being offered and deals being done behind the scene. My concern about all of this, Sam, and regardless whether they're on the left or the right of the party, is I think the country needs reform in lots and lots of ways. Economic reform, social reform, electoral reform. You know, I am a great reformer. Um, and I don't see any of those three offering any reform of any kind whatsoever. And I just feel that economically, unless we have some changes, we're in a bad place. And you've written, I mean, you are pretty pessimistic about the UK economy, aren't you? I'm, so I'm, I'm optimistic about the UK's potential. I'm pessimistic about the ability of people in Westminster to unlock that. Um, you look at the last 15 years of economic performance... GDP per capita in real terms, so this is you know, the, the figure that actually matters, yes. the amount of wealth per person, per person. has grown at 0.6% a year, which is diabolically bad. Um, if you project these growth rates out another 12 years or so, Poland overtakes us. Now, it's not necessarily saying that's going to happen, but it's an illustration of just how badly we are doing. And you look at these... But I thought these massive numbers of people coming into the country every year with huge migration was increasing our GDP. It will increase your, it will most increase your overall GDP, but it won't increase the per capita figure, which is obviously what matters to those of us here. Um, so you, you, you look at these candidates, though, and none of them are sitting there saying, I have a plan to fix this abysmal record on productivity. Mm. I have a plan to address the fact that wages today, in, in real terms, are about the same as they were in 2007, or even slightly lower. Um, and no one is talking seriously about planning reform. The only candidate who did, Sajid Javid, uh, got kicked out very early on. And that's housing, basically. That's housing. Well, it's, it's housing, but it's also R&D and infrastructure and all of these things, which are so important to economic growth. Um, if you want to start a business, you need, you need to be able to have an office for it. And so if you look at lab space, um, the UK does incredibly well in, in high technology, right? Yep. We've got Oxford, we've got Cambridge, we've got... Yeah, Ontario. some clever people, good inventors. Exactly. Yep. How much lab space is available in London right now? It's around 90,000 square feet. You go off to Boston, Massachusetts, that figures in the millions. Of no, of course, of so, course, of course. So basically, Sam, one of these three becomes Prime Minister, yeah. nothing changes whatsoever, <laughs> and they crash the defeat at the next election. Pretty much. I think he's right. Sam <laughs> Ashworth-Hayes, thank you very much thank indeed. You.